All right. So today we have another episode of the Show Me the Data podcast. Uh, and it's my pleasure to introduce our guest in Yotam, uh, who's the Director of Marketing at Sentinel One. Yotam, thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning. Awesome. So maybe just before we jump into to the details around the show and, and what we're going to cover, um, can you share a little bit about what Sentinel One does and your role at the company? Sure. So Sentinel One is a cybersecurity company focusing on endpoint security, now also extending our offering to a cloud and IoT product. Uh, my role is to uh, look after the, the Israeli market where I'm based, and I'm also part of uh, Sentinel One's global marketing. Awesome. And thank you for that context. So, and I know today we want to focus a little bit on, um, you have some very unique things that you do on a daily basis to help drive the team forward um, in the Israeli market, but then also globally. Um, can you talk to or, or share a little bit about the shift that you've gone through over the last three months um, as the world has changed um, from a longer term strategic thinking to some of the micro things that you're doing now on a more daily basis? Sure. So uh, COVID-19 has hit uh, just about everyone everywhere. And I think it was a uh, extremely surprising blow for us marketers because we were used to working on a medium to long-term plan. We had a strategy in place. We had our calendars with our events, everything booked sometimes years in advance. And then COVID came and kind of shuffled everything and forced us to think quick uh, and move quick on our feet. Uh, the way that we've adjusted uh, at Sentinel One is that although we haven't ditched our strategic initiatives and, and plans, We've gone from a, a quarterly, monthly, or even weekly planning uh, to uh, operating on a very tactical, even micro-tactical uh, level. Uh, the way that I do it, with my capacity within the team, we're in charge of, of growth, meaning the creation of, of digital assets that should be turned into leads, eventually into paying customers. And the way that I do that is that on a daily basis, I enjoy the, the time difference and the fact that most of my clients are, are still asleep when I wake up in the morning. I, I literally scan all the relevant news about cybersecurity, endpoint security market, data breaches, everything that happens that have any relevancy to my target audience. And then almost on a daily basis, I find something interesting. And I try to think if I can then use this uh, as a hook or as a, a foundation to build content upon. Oftentimes it will be something as simple as, as crafting the social media uh, messages for the day. It could be tweets, a post on LinkedIn, just a reference to something that has happened that we might have helped uh, uh, to, uh, to mitigate or we can help the people who are dealing with. If it's something deeper than that, uh, we'll try to uh, draft perhaps a blog post or a short uh, recording that we can uh, broadcast uh, uh, live to have a more substantial asset. If it's something that goes even deeper, I will involve my other team members who have uh, more technical proficiencies, and then we can think if it's something that we can research and create some sort of an asset, like a white paper or some document that we can perhaps later share. Everything done on a very uh, uh, short-term basis, so it's almost an hour to hour, uh, we keep very close communication through uh, dedicated Slack channels. So we're pretty much online all the time when we are up. And uh, we try to close the loop on a, on a very uh, fast basis in order to get stuff that is interesting to our uh, target audience, to show them that we're relevant, and perhaps, you know, uh, entice them to, to engage with our content. And on that engagement aspect of things, one thing that that's interesting is the channels that your potential buyers are living on or your audience that you want to target. And I think based on our, our previous conversation, there were some interesting things that you found from podcasts and medium um, were the most common channels. So how, were, how did you go through that process of identifying where your buyers were um, that wasn't on your site or traditional third-party research sites that, that may be associated with um, where buyers live? So uh, many of our end users, perhaps they're not the buyers or people who sign the check, but are people who are engaged with our technology. Uh, basically, anyone that uses a laptop uh, at an enterprise could have our agent installed on it. And 
Uh, what I've done is I polled our own uh, uh, R&D team, which is about 250 people strong here in Tel Aviv. So they're all very technically inclined people. And I asked them, where do you consume your content? I've done like a survey. And, and then I saw that many people uh, do so on, on traditional channels, like um, traditional media. So we have the newspapers, the media outlets, then the traditional social media channels, such as LinkedIn, a little bit of Facebook and, and Twitter as well. And then I found that a lot of them enjoy uh, consuming more technical uh, content on, on the blogging platform known as Medium. And a lot of them also enjoy uh, listening to podcasts about technical issues. So with that in mind, we also opened another, other channels uh, to get to this wide audience where we published mostly technical content that has no direct implication on our product, but it shows our technical prowess. It shows just how capable our, our employees are. And that helps us both with selling the product and uh, with recruitment. I, within that, and I guess as you start to publish on Medium, uh, you, you lose control over the ability to um, gain opt-in or gain leads. So how do you go through the process of n both creating binge-worthy content that whether it's an end user or an ultimate buyer wants to engage with, but then also balance that with the content that's going to um, I guess entice buyers to hand over their credentials to ultimately uh, turn into a lead. What's the process in determining what's going to be more technical focused and maybe there's an overlap there, um, but what's going to live on a channel like Medium or in a podcast versus what's going to live on your site with a lead magnet associated with it? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to split the answer into two. First of all, you're correct. Not all content that we create uh, deserves uh, to be uh, gated and we cannot ask people to pay uh, with their credentials to consume it. Uh, so that's obvious. And, and I think that our way to, uh, to circumnavigate this is through cadence. We generate a lot of content between four to six blog posts a week, uh, both on, 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 on LinkedIn, uh, on Medium, on our blog. So people expect good content for us. And, and we've chosen specific areas where we know we excel in, such as uh, Mac OS uh, security. So there's very few companies who does that well. We have uh, world-renowned researchers some of them work on my team. So the content that they produce are, is consumed by Mac aficionados uh, all over the world. So people know that they, they create very uh, unique and interesting content. So they can uh, do a series of blog posts on, on a certain topic. Let's say the, uh, we've done our own take on, on the new uh, uh, Mac announcement. I think it was uh, two weeks ago when we showed our insights of, uh, of the security impacts of the new uh, Mac OS release, okay? Uh, and that uh, was featured in our blog and in other places and it got some very nice traffic. With time, we will bundle several of these uh, blog posts, which are free to anyone at the moment, and we will bundle them into a more deeper, deep dive technical uh, ebook. And this is something that we will feel comfortable uh, asking people to pay uh, with their credentials, okay? So I think it's a combination of, of creating very good quality content over time. And then when you generate an asset worthy uh, uh, of credentials, then you're not afraid to ask for it and people are happy to give that to you. Regarding the type of content, uh, we have at the moment three uh, distribution channel. One is the corporate blog where First of all, we use it for company announcement and the likes about cooperation, uh, commercial successes. And we mainly post uh, content which is uh, in the regions of, of thought leadership, top of the funnel content. So we'll speak about trends, recent attacks, uh, how we build our products, so and so. The second is a, is a very technical uh, threat intelligence driven blog, which we label Sentinel Labs. And that's where all the very sophisticated deep dive technical analysis of malware, of cybercrime infrastructure, of underground communities, that's uh, where everything like that resides. And if it's technical and not related to cyber in, in any specific way, uh, like a recent blog post that we've done on our front end and how we've streamlined that, 
So that will sit on, on medium, which we feel is uh, more appropriate for the general technical uh, audience. So that's the way that we uh, decide uh, which uh, content goes where. That makes sense. And I guess there's, and I'm sure the, the cybersecurity space isn't alone in this trend, but um, with more folks working from home, there's been an increase in digital traffic, um, but lower intent. So when you think about content and cutting through the noise, what are, you, what are the things that you're doing to help create urgency with these increased traffic, but lower intent audiences that are, are landing, on, landing on your site? Um, yeah, what you mentioned is, by the way, uh, seen through all B2B tech companies and, and felt by all marketers. And that people have more online time, they wander the internet, they, they go into places, they spend time on your website, but they shop less, okay? I think it's true for, for all of us in, in these times. And from different reasons, some of them don't have the budgets, other don't have you know, the, the mentality or the psychological they wanna spend right now. So uh, our ways to, uh, uh, to deal with that is first of all, as I mentioned, is to be very uh, uh, reactive and very timely in nature. If we respond to something that's happening today, okay, COVID-19 is a big thing, but if we saw, uh, a specific spear phishing attack, which is COVID-19 themed, that's happening today, or uh, some sort of a skirmish in the border between India and China, that happened last week, uh, also on the cyber front. So people, you know, uh, tend to react more to stuff that is, that is fresh, that is relevant. Um, uh, second of all, um, you know, our guideline is if you don't have anything interesting to say, don't say it. And if you don't have anything interesting to offer, don't offer people. Uh, so we thought what we can do to really help our client. And we came up with a free offering of Sentinel-1 uh, uh, core product in which for existing customers, we extend the numbers of license indefinitely because they needed more licenses working from home. And for new customers, again, an indefinite number of license for uh, a period of three months. It started in, in March and, and ended a couple, actually yesterday in, in the end of June. Well, we offered the product for free because we knew people working from home and hadn't had proper endpoint security. They needed it now. So this is something we felt very strongly. We knew that there was a need. We knew that we were being helpful. Put aside the commercial aspects, marketing wise, we've hit all the right spot and we've seen some uh, you know tremendous uptake both in the people who responded to that and also the media who you know uh, favors stories uh, where you do good to help other people. So these are kind of two ways that we can cut through the clutter is by being very relevant and timing and only offering uh, stuff that is relevant. I'll give you one more example. Uh, by now, just about everyone has done it, but we've identified as early as as I think March fifth when most people were still working at the office, we realized that offices are gonna be closed and people are gonna be working from home. And I'm pretty sure we were the first one in the industry to uh, arrange and, and broadcast a webinar about uh, best practices of, of working from home. Again, that was weeks or even months before other uh, companies in, in, the, in the industry were doing that. Why? Because we thought about where we could be relevant, what could be, uh, uh, the next thing that they will need. We've now made a, a checklist of things that you need to, to do when you go back to the office. Reset passwords, scan all the laptops people have brought home, that kind of stuff. Again, trying to be very relevant, even look a little bit ahead of the curve on where people will be looking at in a week or two and try to meet them there and then. That, that makes sense. And I know it may be a little bit early, but I guess where you mentioned that the the three month free or unlimited license ended yesterday. Have you seen any commercial impact from people that are continuing on or are going to be continuing on? Do you have any insight into what that pipeline may look like? Uh, I haven't spoken with all our seller apps. We, we have like hundreds of them, but uh, yeah, uh, first of all, their first uh, feedback, the reaction they got was that uh, clients were uh, uh, very uh, appreciative of this offer. Uh, they thank them even if they didn't need it at the moment. And this will really help us uh, stay top of mind when they do have budgets. Yes, we have, we've got some very good leads of, of companies that we weren't engaged with before that we got on their radar. And 
And yes, some of the customers that have uh, received uh, free licenses or extended licenses will continue to use them, obviously, and now we'll incorporate them into their, their existing pricing scheme. That's awesome. And so I guess, Yote, I'm just to end us off um, with physical events off the table for the foreseeable future. Um, is there anything outside of content that you're doubling down on um, looking forward over the next second half of the year? Yeah, I, I think uh, what we've started uh, to do more recently, again, it's a form of content, but we weren't doing enough of that before, and that's uh, video. Uh, there's still a big blue ocean when it comes to video, especially if you're thinking about stuff that is timely, because video usually takes a long time to make and it's expensive. But if you can come up with stuff that people can consume on the go as they watch, uh, again, because people, they have more time now, but less focus. So they go to a blog site, they'll skim it, they perhaps read a paragraph or two, and, and then they'll move on. But if you give them a five or six minute video that actually captures the, the essence of that same blog post, but in a more a visual way, then there's a chance that they will listen. And uh, there are also new uh, distribution channels for such video. It doesn't have to reside on, on YouTube. Uh, we can actually broadcast this uh, live. LinkedIn has just recently add this feature and we're doing a, a weekly uh, TV show as we call it, a weekly live broadcast every Thursday. And this is just another channel for us uh, to reach the audience. In addition, although physical events are currently not happening, we do try to maintain physical touch with the customers. So depending on geography, we created mini sets uh, of, of gifts, of giveaways that we've sent to existing uh, accounts. Uh, people have gotten very nice coffee mugs. Uh, we even had branded pajamas that we sent to our employees and some of our partners as the new work attire. Uh, so again, small things that you can do to keep, to maintain the relationship going with existing customers and hopefully gain new one when this is all behind us. Yeah, that's awesome. The pajamas is very cool. That's, uh, I, I like that creativity there. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you, Yotam, for, for coming on. Uh, just in closing, if people want to connect with you, what's the best way to, to reach out? Uh, just contact me on LinkedIn. I have 27,000 contacts, meaning that I have room for 3,000 more. So please be one of those 3,000 and help me reach my limit. Then I'll beg them to, to extend it. Awesome. Thanks, Yotiam. Thank you so much, Alex, for hosting me. You're very welcome. I hope you enjoyed another unfluffy episode of the Show Me the Data podcast. If you want to become part of our community with other demand gen leaders and get exclusive access to Q&As with the guests we have on the show, click the link in the description of the podcast.